Okay, hello everyone. <coughs> I'm Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to perform an addition, how to add some numbers, or add the contents of some cells by using different techniques. I'm showing you the bad practice and the good practice. So I start with a data set showing a certain number of vehicles. And for each day of the week, I have the mileage done by each vehicle. So I just want to add up the numbers. The technique that I used for the first two days of the week where I have a pink background, that's not the proper technique. That's not an efficient technique. But starting from Wednesday, where I have the green fill, then the technique will be much better. And moving to the right, the technique will be even better. So let's see what we did for Monday. I already created the calculation. So if I select the total row, I'm selecting cell B12. And then I would like to see what I did. Why do I say it's a bad technique? When I hit my formula in the edit mode by hitting the F2 key, I'm hard coding the numbers, which means if any one of the input values change, then the result will not update automatically. Let's test. So if I type, let's say, 500, where I hit enter, nothing happens. So it's a static calculation. It's not a dynamic calculation. For the next technique, for Tuesday, if I hit F2, I'm using the container, I'm using the cell reference. But although this technique will enable me to change the input values and have my result update, so if I type 62 in the first cell and then I hit enter, then the result updates automatically, and that's fine. But what happens if I want to insert a row in between? So if I select any row, and then I say, I would like to insert a row in between, you can do that by right-clicking or by hitting the shortcut Control plus to insert. And then I click in this cell, and I say, what if I add 500? I have a missed transaction. When I hit enter, it's not included in the calculation. That's why we say it's not an efficient technique. So I'll be hitting Control Z twice. And let's go to the good practice. For Wednesday, I'll be using a sum function. So I'll be typing equal sum, and then I hit tab. What would you like to sum? I would like to sum these numbers. So I click and drag to select these numbers. When I close the bracket, I can simply hit enter or hit tab, and the calculation will return a result. In this situation, whether you insert a row or you change a number, the result will update automatically. For Thursday, I'll be using a built-in tool in Excel that enables me to perform the addition on the fly. And because addition is beyond a doubt the most commonly used calculation in Excel, that's why Microsoft added a command called the AutoSum, the Sigma symbol, and it made it available in two locations, either to the left side of the formulas bar or to the right side of the Home tab, so I can see it in either location with a single click. If I just click on auto sum, many things will happen simultaneously. If I hit auto sum, number one, Excel will add the sum function in the cell. Excel will pick up the input range. All what I need to do is to hit enter. And I'm always wondering if the Excel guessing is correct. The Excel guessing might not be correct. So how did Excel recognize the range that we want to sum? Let's repeat one more time. When I click on auto sum, Excel finds a different alignment, and when it bumps into a different alignment, it understands that's a different data type, so it stops the selection at this point. And because the Excel guessing is not always right, especially if I have a blanks in between, then instead of doing this, instead of selecting the destination and let Excel guess the input range, well, I can do the opposite. I can select the input range and then let Excel guess the destination by clicking on auto sum and that will return the right result as well. This technique is very useful if I want to perform multiple calculations on the fly. So if I select all the cells and then click on auto sum, I would have created a total for the seven days of the week. I can even do better by undoing and then if I select an extra column and an extra row, one single click on auto sum will be adding all the columns, will be adding all the rows, and it will be calculating a total for the totals. So that's the technique for Thursday. Let's delete and let's go to the next technique, a technique that is relatively new in Excel. It's called the quick analysis tool. What does it mean, the quick analysis tool? It's a built-in tool in Excel that enables me to perform multiple tasks. 
So if I click and drag, just by dragging, once I release my mouse, the quick analysis tool pops up. And the quick analysis tool is this little icon. You can either click on it to open the quick analysis tool, or you can simply make a selection. And because quick starts with letter Q, if you hit Control Q, you will be opening the quick analysis tool. It consists of five tabs. So we have a formatting tab for performing conditional formatting. We have a chart tab for creating charts. We have a total tab for performing calculations. If we want to create tables, we can go to the tables tab. If we want to create a tiny chart that lives in one single cell, which is called sparkline, I can click on sparkline. We are talking about calculations, so I go to totals. Then look at the blue color and look at the yellow color. The blue color enables me to perform calculations at the column level. So simply by hovering over the different options we have, here is the sum function, here is an average, here is a count, here is a percentage of total, here is a running total. Should you wish to perform calculations at the row level, then you can continue moving to the right and here is a sum. I can click on the little triangle and then I can see the average, I can see the count, I can see the percentage total and the running total. We were able to perform all these calculations on the fly by using the quick analysis tool. My next technique for Saturday, I'll be using a function called the subtotal function. So what does it mean, a subtotal function? Well, as I mentioned before, a function has a name. The subtotal function is a group of functions combined together. It can perform the addition, it can perform the average, it can perform the count. But the advantage of the subtotal function is that it can exclude the hidden rows, it can exclude the filtered rows. What does it mean? Let me create a sum function for this group. So I click on sum equals sum and then I hit tab and then I click and drag to select this range and close the bracket and then hit enter and the sum of this range for Saturday is 845. What if I go and hide two rows, right click and hide and when I'm hiding two rows the total didn't change. That means the sum function is not excluding the hidden rows and that might affect my analysis and might, uh, might affect my calculation or at least it might affect my interpretation for the data I have. So I'm going to undo and instead of the sum function I'll be using another function called the subtotal equal subtotal and then I hit the tab key and look at that the subtotal function is asking for what function would you like to do? So it's a group of functions by itself. It's not one single function. So look at the numbers. If I select, let's say, 4, that means it will be the equivalent of a max function. If I select, let's say, 5, that means the subtotal will be the equivalent of the min function. But if I use sum, what if I want the sum? Then look at this, it's number 9. So if I hit 9, that means I'll be performing a sum function. That will be the same exact sum function. What if I go further down? I have the same numbers, but starting from 100. 101, 102. So instead of selecting the sum, which is 9, I'll go and select the sum, which is 109. What does it mean? It means... I want to include the functionality that will exclude any hidden row or any filtered row. I selected subtotal 109 and then I hit comma. Well, what would you like to subtotal? What would you like to sum? I'll be selecting the same exact range and when I close the bracket it's returning the same exact number. But let's go and hide some rows. I'm going to right click and say I want to hide now the result changes. It does not include in my calculation the hidden rows, which is a great advantage over the sum function. Let's undo. And now let's go to Sunday. And for Sunday, what would you like to do? Well, I would like to add these numbers by using a shortcut. I'll be using the shortcut that requires using two index fingers. My left index finger will go to the Alt key on my keyboard and my, my right index finger will double click on the equal sign Alt equal equal and here is the result. If you enjoyed this training video, like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.
see you in our next training video